China has named a new foreign minister, reappointing Wang Yi to replace Jin Kang. Gang had not been seen in public since the end of June, sparking speculation about his health and whereabouts. Yi previously served as foreign minister between 2018 and 2023. The governor of China's central bank has also been replaced. Katrina Yu is in Beijing. So, Katrina, what happened? I mean, first, the foreign minister just drops off the radar. Nobody knows where he is for a month. And then, mysteriously, we find out he's been replaced. That's right. Speculation had been mounting. Qin Gang had not been seen for at least four weeks at a time of intense diplomatic activity for China. He was last seen in public meeting with Vietnam's foreign minister in June. Uh, but since then, he had missed a number of high-level visits by U.S. officials at a time when Beijing is trying to stabilize ties with Washington. He also missed earlier this month an ASEAN uh, foreign minister's meeting. And the reason given for him not participating at the time was ill health. Now, this decision and announcement of Qin Gong's removal was given after a meeting by China's National People's Congress Standing Committee on Tuesday. Uh, it was decided that he would be replaced by actually his predecessor, Wang Yi. Now, this is an enormous shock. Qin Gong's rise in the Communist Party had been rapid and meteoric. At the age of 57, he was one of the youngest officials ever to be named foreign minister, a post he only held, by the way, for seven months. Uh, he was named foreign minister in December. And before that, he was China's ambassador to the United States for two years. And previously, he was a foreign ministry spokesperson and actually one of the original so-called wolf warriors, known for his very assertive diplomatic style. And another reason this is such a shock is that Qin Gong was known for being a close and trusted ally of President Xi Jinping. And this closeness was really seen to have boosted his career. Qin Gong managed to achieve in years what would have taken other officials decades. Now, we don't know any uh, exact reason for his removal, but I do have to mention that while Qin Gang has been removed from his post as foreign minister, he still retains another Communist Party title of state councillor, which is arguably more senior. Uh, so this is leading analysts to say it could be that he hasn't fallen completely out of favour and it could be that there is something else to this. Right. So speculation, as always. We'll have a guest on in a moment. But first, though, tell us more about Wang Yi, the, the new foreign minister, who is reprising his role as foreign minister. Um, just until now, he was the country's top diplomat. That's right. So Wang Yi is still the country's top diplomat. So his official role is Foreign Affairs Office Director, and he outranked Qin Gang. So he will retain that role alongside also having the role as foreign minister, a role that which he had previously for 10 years. So this dual role situation for Wang Yi, that's a lot on his plate and it's leading many to believe that this situation could be temporary uh, and in due course there will be another foreign minister named. But of course Wang Yi's experience as foreign minister, he held that post for 10 years uh, before he was taken over by Qin Gang. Uh, he will be a familiar face. Uh, and I think it's very much to hope that Beijing uh, will have Wang Yi in their corner as a stabilizing force at a time which is really marked by a lot of upheaval for the foreign ministry at the moment. So continuity at the top of uh, China's diplomacy. Katrina Yu in Beijing, thank you very much. Let me turn to Nicholas Bekelin. He is a senior fellow at Yale University's China Center. You're joining us from New Haven in Connecticut uh, about this. Do you think we'll ever know what happened to uh, Jin Gang? I think we may know, but um, we don't know for for the moment. And I think this is very reflective of the way that the Communist Party functions, especially at the highest level. Uh, disappearances are not uncommon. They are actually the rule. When you have a problem with a top official, whether it's factional struggling or corruption or just a health matter, um, the party really doesn't think about the public. The public comes last on the list of things to say. This is the party who decides when and what it tells the public. First, it has to solve the problem internally. But this is a huge embarrassment for China. I mean, Qin Gang, the foreign minister, is the public face of China with the world on the international stage. And it's hard to overstate uh, the impact, the negative impact that this is having among uh, diplomats around the world. So the point you were just making about this, uh, making about how this is China, how China operates. Here's a list of people who went missing in the past decade. It's not the exhaustive full list. 
tennis player Peng Shui, artist Wei Wei, celebrity actress Zhao Wei, Interpol chief Meng Hong Wei, business mogul Jack Ma, now the foreign minister. Now, for quite a few of those, they at some point reemerged a few weeks or a few months after they dropped off the radar, but not all. Um, it, this does not seem to actually disrupt the way the Chinese government functions. It doesn't look like this is disrupting Chinese diplomacy. Well, the direction of Chinese diplomacy um, depends on one man, Xi Jinping himself. He's made a very clear uh, imprint on foreign policy. He's turned the page of China playing sort of a key, a low-key role in the world. It has stated China's ambition to be a peacemaker in Ukraine, uh, in Yemen, um, in between Saudi Arabia and Iran. I mean, he is really the one who drives uh, the direction of foreign policy. And then, as your correspondent in Beijing was saying, we have Wang Yi, uh, who outranks Qing Gang. Uh, he's a member of the Central Committee. He's a former foreign minister, so he's the one really implementing the strategy. Qing Gang, as the foreign minister, is the one who sort of runs the day-to-day -day, um, machinery. But that is nonetheless very important because diplomats rely on, they rely on trust, they rely on knowing each other, they rely on the ability to reach to each other. It's highly concerning when you have the foreign minister just disappearing for a month without but Nicholas, uh, a proper explanation. Foreign diplomats know Wang Yi. I mean, the, the spate of uh, high-level American, either diplomats or just uh, leaders of government, that, that were in Beijing recently, they all met in addition to the foreign minister. In fact, often before meeting the foreign minister, they were meeting, they were meeting Wang Yi. So it's not going to be much of a difference to them. Well, it, it, it does, actually, because, yes, uh, Chinese foreign diplomacy doesn't disappear from one day to the next. But how can you count on building something, on finding solutions, on uh, signing um, uh, agreements when the foreign minister just disappeared for weeks. China is a highly hierarchical bureaucracy. If the top guy at the foreign ministry is not there, it completely paralyzes the, the system. And for foreign diplomats, especially in Asia, when Qing Gong missed the very critical ASEAN uh, meeting, which uh, Southeast Asia is really the, the sort of the front line of the battle of influence between China and the U.S. at the moment. This is really a big miss uh, for China. And it puts back in the mind of people that China is unpredictable, that at any point people can disappear, that you have no guarantee that what comes uh, on the next day. And I think that is the reminder that China is trying to avoid as it casts itself as a uh, sort of a, a, a very stable, uh, trustworthy, uh, and reliable architect of a new world order that is supposed to come right. uh, after the American-led one. All right, Nicholas Beckelin, senior fellow at Yale University's China Center. Thank you very much. We'll be keeping an eye out, an eye out to see whether Qin Gang reemerges, and if so, what he might have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you.